Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I wanted to make kind of a nostalgia video for you guys. Today's a special day and it is actually the nine year anniversary of GTA Online and just as I thought Rockstar actually did not acknowledge it, I won't be surprised if in you know, Tuesday and Thursday, when a newswire typically gets updated, they still will not acknowledge GT Online's nine-year um, birthday. They typically don't within um, the years. But anyways, I want to talk about the evolution of GT Online in this video, and I wanted to talk about um, just what I think made the game great, how the game grew over time. I've been playing since the very first day, so I'm pretty familiar with the game over the years. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show some some old videos from my channel also talk about the update as well as some newer videos. Um, but anyways, let's start out by talking about 2013. So on October 1st, 2013, GT Online launched. And I'll say I'll say this, this people might find is very surprising. 2013, right when the game launched, was actually in its worst state possible. It's actually probably the worst time for GT Online. Now, why was 2013 is such a really bad time. The reason 2013 was such a really bad time is because the game launched with disaster. The servers were really buggy. Rockstar was clearly not ready for the launch. Um, it got really bad that if you think the cloud servers are really bad now, you haven't seen anything when the game launched. So when the game first launched, people would actually play all day and they would get their characters deleted. Yeah, that actually happened. So I actually remember I got up to rank 18 in one day and that actually took some time then because back then all people basically did was they grinded contact missions um, mostly you know people did races occasionally but it was mostly contact mission spam that people did and the contact missions they paid a fixed amount so they, they didn't pay like today where you know the longer you take generally um they pay longer and then eventually they cap out at a certain amount but back then the contact missions would always pay the same no matter how much how long you took on them and what would happen is every single time that you died in the game I'm trying to remember the exact number. I think it was like 500 or a thousand dollars. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But every single time that you died, you lost like a, something a thousand something dollars every time that you died. And it did not matter if that n money was actually in the bank account or not. You would lose it. And so it was very easy to you know grind a bunch of contact missions and then lose the majority of the money. Um, also at that time, it was that uh, people were if you got mugged. Pretty sure that you lost whatever you were carrying in cash. Now today, it's up to $10,000. So we had a lot of glitches at launch. Um, we did actually not have that much content. People thought that there'd be a lot of content in the game, but there actually was not. The game was in a pretty bad state. And we had gotten the Beach Bum update, which was near the end of the year. And the Beach Bum update really did not add much. It added the SNS pistol, which almost nobody uses, and it added this van. So this van is actually probably one of the first vehicles that was added to GT Online. So... It was just a pretty boring, bad update, and just there just wasn't that much content. People got people got really pissed about this. Eventually, you know, I made another character after getting my character deleted, and my character did not get deleted because of any kind of glitches or hacks or any of that stuff. It just got deleted because it's just really bad servers. And so then eventually I made another character a few days later, and that is the character that I have with a billion dollars. And then I also made a new character when uh, PS5 came out. But anyways, um, what eventually happened was... Uh, it was just a few weeks of playing and modders and hackers had actually invaded GT Online. It had happened. And I could not believe it. I could not believe that a game run by Rockstar had gotten breached uh, this quickly, but it did happen. And so modders were going lobby to lobby and they were basically doing these massive money drops. They were setting bounties on people that were like uh, millions of dollars. Um, they were uh, dropping everybody money. And so even if you did not take the money, you got it. And what happened to me is I remember I sat in my apartment once and as I was sitting in my apartment, I actually got hundreds of millions of dollars from some modder. I did not ask for it. It just happened all of a sudden. And uh, I got pretty pissed off because I actually wanted to play a lot of the missions in the game. And I felt like there was no point to me playing the game anymore. And then eventually after like a few weeks, my money was taken away. I was actually happy about that, that it was taken away. But that is the disastrous state of GTA Online at launch in 2013. And I think that like a lot of players to this day, and I'm not trying to hate on GTA Online guys, I love this GTA Online. I think it's one of the best online games I've played. But I'm just saying is there's a lot of people that are in denial today. They act like GTA Online was this smooth, amazing game at launch with no issues. But I'm telling you, from a 2013 player, this game was a disaster at launch. And anybody that played in 2013, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Now, if we move on to 2014, 2014 was a little bit better than 2013. You know, the servers got better under control. You know, characters at least were getting deleted. But it, we did not really see that much amazing content. You know, we saw stuff like the 
the Valentine's Day Massacre special, which was a reference to, um, you know, 1920s Chicago and 1920s Al Capone. Um, you know, we had some, you know, out, uh, cool, like, 1920s gangster outfits. We had, you know, the Gusenberg Sweeper. Um, we had, you know, the Roosevelt, which is actually Al Capone's car. And here's a fun fact for you. The reason that the Roosevelt is actually, um, the reason Al Capone's car is actually called the Roosevelt in GTA, but the reason the Roosevelt is actually called the Roosevelt, it's a reference to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What happened was, uh, right after the Pearl Harbor attacks, um, after the Pearl Harbor attacks, the day after it, President Roosevelt was actually going to the, um, uh, the Capitol building to give a speech to Congress declaring war on the Empire of Japan. And what happened was the Secret Service did not have really any kind of armored vehicle at the time. And so they were scared that Roosevelt would possibly be assassinated by um, Japanese or German spies. And so they needed to get him to the Capitol building in a safe, um, armored, secure vehicle. And so what they did was they pulled out Al Capone's car, which Al Capone's car had been seized by the U.S. government. They held it for um, uh, two decades, uh, a little bit more than a decade. And that car actually was bullet, uh, bulletproof. It was almost built like a mini tank, armored doors. So that's, that's the reason that it's actually called the Roosevelt, because President Roosevelt used that car as he was driven to the Capitol building. And then we move on to, you know, the business update. Um, we had the business update. We had, you know, the heavy pistol added. We had the special carbine. And um, uh, this update also added a few cars, but it wasn't really anything special. You know, it wasn't something to get excited for. Uh, we then had the high life update, which the high life update, um, again, this added a few new cars, but... I'm not really going to talk about that much, guys, because personally, for me, I'm just not a car guy. But just know that these updates, the business update and the high life update, they were not really anything um, special. You know, it's not really people were expecting a lot more content. They didn't get it here. Then we had, you know, I'm not a hipster. Um, we had, you know, the vintage pistol. Um, we had the anti cavalry uh, dagger and we had several new vehicles. Uh, but uh, again, the update did not really give us much content, didn't give us any properties. Properties were actually not added for some time. Um, and then we had gotten the Independence Day special, which was in July of 2014. Now, with the Independence Day special, um, basically, like it says, this was Celebrate 4th of July. We had gotten the musket, the firework launcher, also had gotten the patriotic monster truck. Um, it was kind of cool. It was a nice, you know, uh, 4th of July event, but it didn't give us really um, still any kind of content. And then, and you know, then later on in the year, in uh, August the twenty, uh, in August nineteenth, twenty fourteen, we had San Andreas Flight School. San Andreas Flight School is probably like you know the first you know update that people really started to like, and people in the aviation community really liked it. Now, San Andreas Flight School. It had given us, uh, you know, several new planes. You had the the um, uh, new helicopter, the Buckingham Swift which that helicopter was Yusuf's personal helicopter in GTA 4. Um, we had gotten the base for a plane, um, the Miljet, which the Miljet still very, very few people own, but a bunch of people did buy the base for a. And so um, this also, this update added new parachutes, but it also added flight school, which flight school is a series of missions, which a lot of people to this day still play and have fun with it. So flight school was not, you know, a, an amazing update, but I would say it was a, you know, generally a good update. I'd say probably flight school is probably the first good GTA update, in my opinion. Um, and then we had last team standing update. Uh, last team standing. Um, this update was a bit of a controversial update. Um, basically, with the last team standing update, uh, this update had is the one who added the bulletproof helmets. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that last team standing added the bulletproof helmets. We had gotten the marksman rifle, which the marksman rifle, um, when it first came out, it started getting spammed. So whenever people would get into combat at long range, they would just spam the marksman rifle, just strafing back and forth, which got a bit frustrating. And then they all, Rockstar had also added the um, heavy shotgun, which the heavy shotgun is actually one of the best, um, uh, one of the best guns to this day. Very good for clearing out rooms. So heavy shotgun was generally a good update. But the reason the last team standing was a bit controversial was because it had added, um, uh, it had, with that update, right after, around that time, you started having people that were, people, people that were getting really into PvP and going really crazy with that. And no, I'm, I know I'm going to have people criticize me for this. I don't have anything against, you know, people. I don't have anything against people playing PvP or, you know, having fun with PvP. But I'm just saying that with this update, you know, people were taking it to the next level. They started really caring about their kill-death ratios, 
Um, uh, they started constantly attacking people, getting into fights, demanding 1v1s, and for me, that was, you know, a bit stupid. I didn't expect something like that in a GTA game. You know, if you want to have 1v1s with people, and you want to do PvP, okay, but, you know, don't, don't expect other people to care about things like your KD. Don't, um, uh, don't expect everybody to accept your 1v1 challenge. That's what I'm just saying about that. Then we had gotten the festive update, which that was in, um, uh, that was in December of 2014, and it was basically like, you know, um, uh, a Christmas update, but we had gotten two new weapons with that. We got Proximity Mines, and we got the Homing Launcher, and the Homing Launcher was kind of helpful, because with the Homing Launcher, the, uh, the Homing Launcher was used to shoot down aircraft like helicopters, and so people would kill each other constantly with the helicopters and some of the aerial vehicles, so I think the Homing Launcher was personally a good addition. Like, some people don't like it. They think that it's ruined GT Online, but you have to also understand there's players that were getting bombed on the ground constantly by buzzers and other, you know, um, uh, vehicles, and so they, uh, Rockstar had added this homing launcher because a lot of players had actually wanted something to shoot down aircraft with, but there's one big thing I forgot to mention, and that was that GTA, on, um, GTA 5 came out November 18, 2014 on, um, uh, on PS4, and on PS4 and Xbox One, and this actually probably brought a lot of life back to the game because, like I said, the 2014 um, updates, they were actually not that good. They were not that interesting. Most of them, at least, were not that interesting. And because of that, uh, because of that, the player, the player numbers were actually dropping. They were actually dropping a lot. There wasn't really much to look forward to on the game except clothes and a few new vehicles. Again, we really didn't have anything still like properties. And so when the game was released on PlayStation 4, we had a first-person mode. You know, we had much better graphics than we did on the PS3. And so this brought, you know, a ton of people back to the game. Because at the time, on 2014, there wasn't really any good games out on the PS4. You know, there wasn't really, at least in my opinion, there really was not that many good games. Play PlayStation 4 was basically a year old at that point, And there really was not that, that many games to play on the PS4. And so when GTA 5 was released on the PS4, you bet a lot of people started playing it again and got back into it. Especially with the graphics and the first-person mode. But other than that, 2014 was not a good year. 2014 was just, you know, 2014 I would say is a bit better than 2013, but 2014 was still not good. And I also want to thank one, one of my viewers, Janice Gerank, in the comment section. He had actually um, uh, told me about an interview with uh, Rockstar in 2014, which they admitted that GTA Online was actually failing, and I actually found this. And um, uh, single player was very successful, but GTA Online began pretty poorly. And, um, and what happened was, um, uh, it also says in 2014, GT Online was actually close to failing. Imran and Sarwar actually said, I think we hoped it might be, but the launch in first eight or nine months of the game were not very successful. Single player was very successful, but GT Online be began pretty poorly. We were losing players rapidly, uh, and even worse, we ourselves were not excited enough by the updates we were making. Once we got more ambitious with our updates and re-engineered a few things to increase the stability and saw what it took to really run a game service, things began to turn around. So you see, Rockstar themselves admitted that the updates in 2014 were not that good. They admitted that the game was actually close to failing. It was not actually uh, good at, at the time. And so, like I said, there's people that are in denial about this. You know, there's m hardcore fanboys, which... Just, just to be clear, the difference between a fanboy and a fan is a fan that is somebody that likes GT Online. A fanboy is somebody that will defend GT Online no matter what, um, even, even the stupid things. And so there are fanboys that are in denial. And they're in denial that GTA Online was pretty close to failure at that time. And they're in denial that GTA Online was not that exciting and was pretty bad in 2013 and 2014. But you hear it right here from Rockstar. And this just goes to show you, when you update a game like GTA Online that has potential, the game tends to grow. If Reddit Online, and you know, I don't want to mention it again, but if Reddit Online had gotten the, the same attention that GTA Online had, because it was the same thing, pretty close to failing, but GTA Online got updates to refresh the game. Reddit Online didn't. And because of that, it failed. But now uh, we're moving on to uh, 2015. And in 2015, we had, you know, the best update in years. And that was the heist update. For, for basically a year and a half, we really didn't have that interesting update. And then heist came out. The heist is one of the largest updates that ever came out. March 10th of 2015. The heist update added a ton of new vehicles. Very useful vehicles like the Armored Karuma, which are still used to this day. Added the Insurgent Pickup, the Technicals. Um, just added a bunch of vehicles, but most importantly, it added heist. So you had the Fleece of Job heist, you had the Prison Break heist, you had the Humane Labs heist, you had the 
uh, Series A heist, and you had the Pacific Standard heist. Now, heist was a great update, and really, this is what made GTA Online. GTA Online became the game that it is today because of the heist. There's no question in my mind it was heist that really brought it back, and a lot of players got into it because there was just so many new missions, so many ways to make money. Now, the thing about heists is that um, heists was well received, but there was massive issues with heist, and some of the issues that was there of heist was you needed four players to start every single heist, even the setup missions. Um, the only heist that required two people was the Felisa job. And what happened was if one person left, the heist would fail. Um, and you'd have to restart, you get reconnected back in the lobby, and you have to invite somebody. Then it was also that um, uh, if somebody would die during the heist again, it would restart. And it was always the same approach. There was really no, you, you had some different roles that you could assign people to, but there was no really, no such thing as heist approaches. And I think that was a mistake that Rockstar made with this update. But the thing is, Rockstar actually learned from that. They learned from their mistakes, the heist update, when they released the Casino DLC, the Casino DLC heist, and they released the Cayo Perico heist, which I'll, I'll, I'll cover that a little bit later. But that was uh, that was basically where they had learned from their mistakes. So basically, to sum it up, heists were fun. They added tons of new missions, new ways to make money, but they got repetitive really quickly because it was the same approach every time and you had to get four players and people in GTA Online typically like to do things either solo or with two players. They don't like to always do everything with four players and the fact that you needed four players for pretty much everything, that annoyed a lot of people. Um, then we had gotten ill-gotten gains um, uh, part one, which ill-gotten gains, we had gotten the combat PDW and basically, you know, a few new cars. We had gotten the Buckingham um, Luxor and a new version of the Swift, but that's pretty much it for the update. Um, that was in June 10th of 2015. And then only a month later, in July 8th, 2015, we actually got an Ill-Gotten Gains Part 2. Ill-Gotten Gains Part 2 gave us the Marksman Pistol, uh, knucker, uh, Knuckle Dusters, and a few new cars. Uh, but again... This update actually did not have that much interesting content behind it. It was just not a well-received update. Like, I don't remember people really saying Ill-Gotten Gains is an awesome update. It just it, it, it just really wasn't. Um, but it was also the last update that was actually released on the, uh, on the PS3. So PS3 and Xbox 360 actually did not have any more updates after this. And then we had gotten the Free Mode Events update now September 15, 2015. Free Mode Events was actually a pretty controversial update. And the reason that the Free Mode Events was a pretty controversial update was because it added new stuff to the game. Like, it added new things to do um, uh, in the world. It added, um, uh, it added, like, you know, the headshot challenges, the highest speed challenges. Uh, you know, it added, like, the air ring challenges. A bunch of them, like, so Free Mode events. However, though, even though, you know, it seems cool adding new stuff to Free Mode, they actually took a lot of content out with this update. So they took out armored trucks, which armored trucks, I don't have any footage of this, unfortunately. But armored trucks used to drive around in Los Santos, and you could actually rob them. Um, there was also, um, uh, there was also these crate drops that would occasionally show up. Uh, there was a, a few different free mode events, but those free mode events that they had in the game, they were actually cut out and replaced with these, and a lot of people actually did not like that. Later on, Rockstar actually learned that, and so years later, they actually added things like, you know, smuggler planes, which they actually added recently back. Um, they added, um, uh... They added, they added in, like, the drug vehicles, the export vehicles, like, different things that you can find in free mode, which made it a little bit better, so they kind of got back to what they were originally. But, like I said, free mode events was kind of a controversial update because they did take out a few features in the game and replaced it with others. And then we had the Lowriders update. Now, the Lowriders update was a pretty popular update, October 20th, uh, 2015. Lowriders was pretty, um... pretty interesting update as well. But uh, the thing about the Lowriders update is that... It added Benny's original motor works, and it added, like, uh, the ability to customize a few new cars with that, and some of the customization was really good in there. Like, it was really detailed. It was some of the best car customization we had. I'm not much of a car guy, um, but I did recognize that it was, you know, interesting, and Rox has added Benny's vehicles over time, you know, to be fair. So they didn't just abandon this, um, uh, this DLC, but they added, you know, new vehicles added to Benny's over the years. But... What interested me the most was the Lamar storyline. So Lamar actually uh, calls you and actually uh, contacts you for a new story. Now, Lamar's storyline, uh, this was a storyline where he was trying to steal a bunch of cars from the Balas and the Vagos for Vernon, which Vernon was a high-ranking Go Grove Street member. And Vernon was actually revealed, his face was actually later revealed in the um, contract DLC years later. 
but the the problem with the Lamar missions is some of them were very challenging, which I don't mind a challenge, but the payouts were just not good on them. So yes, they were kind of fun. It was it was cool seeing Lamar again in cutscenes, but we did not we didn't get really any good payouts, and it, this should have been a heist, in my opinion. I honestly think Lowrider should have been an extra heist. Like, it should have been a heist where you steal all these cars together, and then afterwards you have to do, like, a finale, selling them, driving them somewhere, avoiding the Balas and the Vagos, something like that. Like, I I, I don't see why Rockstar couldn't have added it in, in, in as a heist. I think that would have been, um, that would have been better. But now we're moving on to Halloween uh, Surprise. Halloween Surprise was, just to go over this really quickly, Halloween Surprise, um, had a few new, um, had a few new adversary modes, the slasher mode, where people try to avoid a, um, a killer. They have flashlights while the slasher has the shotgun, and then after time, they can actually kill the slasher. They added the flashlight in the game, uh, but flashlight just is just basically what it is, a flashlight. And so these updates, like, you know, the Christmas update, the Halloween update, and the uh, Valentine's Day update, these updates were re-added over the years. Uh, and then we had the GT Online executives and their criminals. Now, this was a, a massive update. And I think that this is actually one of the, this is one of the best things they've added. Now, the reason GT Online Executives and Other Criminals was actually a great update was uh, because they had actually added the yachts. So they added a, uh, something, they actually added something for you to spend your money on, which that's basically my main problem is when they add updates, you got to add something for us to spend our money on. But this update added, you know, a, a yacht to spend money on. The yacht, to be fair, did not have that much stuff to do on it. Like, a lot of people think that it's a waste of money. But I did I did like having the ability to have a mobile safe, safe house on the water. Though, transport with the yacht was way too expensive at the time. $25,000, that's that's just way too much money to move a yacht around. But we had a helipad on the yacht. Um, so, we had the yacht itself. But we also had, you know, a few, a bunch of new vehicles. Like, one of them, we had the turreted limo. But we also had VIPs which VIPs added way more content to uh, to GT Online. Now, VIPs, these were basically the precursor to CEOs, and VIPs, you needed a million dollars at the time to start one up. You didn't need to pay a million dollars, you just need to have a million dollars. And then when you pay, when you start the VIP, you invite three other, you could up, invite up to three other people to it, and you do other jobs. Um, you do other jobs like uh, Sightseer. Uh, I'm trying to remember whether Headhunter was in the game at launch. Um, I don't remember whether Headhunter was there. I know Sightseer was there. I know Hostile Takeover was there. And so this was like a way for you and your CEO to make up uh, your VIP, excuse me, to make money. So it was a way for a bunch of people to group up together in free mode itself and start making money. Though the unfortunate thing was that VIPs would only last for four hours. And once you disbanded it, you couldn't start it up until you couldn't start it up until the next um, day, which kind of sucked. And then we had gotten the festive surprise, you know, Christmas stuff in, tw in at the end of 2015. But I'm not really going to talk about that uh, because it's pretty much the sa most of the same thing. Um, we had gotten um, a few new adversary modes at the beginning of the year. And we had gotten, you know, more Valentine's Day stuff. Again, not really going to cover that. It's just most of it is just rehashed from the previous year. Uh, we had gotten the Lowriders Custom Classic, March 15, 2016. Um, so we had gotten the Dull Barrel Shotgun the compact rifle, and we had gotten um, some new vehicles added to Benny's workshop, uh, but this was this was basically like filler content in between. It was it was nice to get something, you know, some a, a few new vehicles, but it was just mostly filler content. Then in uh, June 7, 2016, which is ironically my birthday, uh, we had actually gotten Further Adventures in Finance and Felony, which I think this is one of the best updates ever added to GTA Online. Further Adventures in Finance and Felony, this update actually added it added CEOs to the game and added CEO offices. And it was just a great update. It also added the ability uh, It added the ability to buy warehouses. Yes, yes, this update, I'm pretty sure, added warehouses. Yes, it did. So we had gotten um, a CEO offices. We can, now be, we can now be a CEO for as long as we wanted. And we had got, I think this is the update actually added Headhunter. And a few other um, a few other jobs to it, but it made C VIPs into CEOs, which are just much better. And added crates. Now, some people don't like crates; they just say, "Oh, you know, crates take way too much time; it's boring." But the thing about crates is that crates was the first business that we had gotten in the game, so it was actually a new way to actually make money with a property that you buy. You collect crates, you source them in your warehouse, and then you s sell crates whatever amount that you wanted. And then what actually happened was, just a month later, we had gotten the Cutting Stunts update, which Cutting Stunts was actually kind of a fun update. It was mostly adversary modes, but it was actually something unique and something different. 
It added a few new vehicles, but the update added these crazy, like, you know, races, all these jumps and these ridiculous tracks in the air. And as unrealistic as it was, I actually did have a bit of fun with cutting stunts. So it was only a month later that we had actually gotten that, which was actually really cool. And then actually in October of 2016, October 4th, 2016, we actually got the bikers update, which this update was made um, because of the biker community. So the biker community in GTA Online had requested this, this update for some time. And this is one of the few times that Rockstar did listen to the community. Rockstar actually used to somewhat listen to the community. So fans had requested bike a bikers themed update for some time. Now, when Rockstar added the bikers update, I was very impressed with the amount of content that this um, uh, update had. We had gotten so many new motorcycles to the game, but we had gotten clubhouses. We We'd gotten the ability to form motorcycle clubs, which are going to be rivals to CEOs now. These were a new, you know, a new way to group up players, and this was up to um, up to eight eight players. It was eight players in an MC, seven in a posse. I read that online. I'm just trying not to mix it up. I'm sorry, um, but it was up to eight players. Pretty sure it's eight players in the um, in the MCs, and so you could now do MC contracts from the clubhouse, which were jobs that you could just start from the clubhouse, but also it was that we had gotten the MC businesses, which the MC businesses are one of the best additions to GTA Online. MC businesses, we've gotten document forgery, uh, weed business, counterfeit cash, meth, and cocaine. These businesses were great because you would now upgrade these businesses. You could buy supplies for them. So you didn't actually need to really do anything for them. You just need to occasionally buy supplies for them. And once you bought supplies for them, they would produce. And then all you had to do is just do a sell mission at the end. So it was a great update. It was a great way to organize players. It was a, up, a way to diversify the game because you had CEOs. Now you had bikers. I just wish that more players would role play as bikers when they when they form as MCs, though. That was my only complaint about that. But that's not something Rockstar can do themselves. Um, that's more up to the players. But a lot of players would just form as MCs and they'd still drive around as cars and just, you know, that. But I wish that more players would role play as MCs. I think that that would just be much cooler. But bikers, excellent, amazing update. And also, you know... Uh, Further Adventures in Finance and Felony. Great update. And also, then, uh, two months later, December 13th, 2016, import-export. And so this is what I say is 2016, this was the time when GT Online, in my opinion, in 2016, was the strongest at its time, at this time. Because with the import-export DLC, Rockstar had added a new business, a new way, a new business for us to link to our CEOs also. So it actually t technically was an expansion onto the CEO update. Uh, we had gotten more garage space. The garage space was in the, I think the office garage space actually came at this time. And with this update, we added a vehicle warehouse and we were able to source vehicle cargo. So we were able to steal high export vehicles, which a lot of people in the car community liked this. So they had an update for the bikers community and they had an update for the cars community. So this was like the time when Rockstar was listening to their fans and actually doing a pretty good job with this. So with the um, with the import export update, you would basically it's similar to vehicle car uh, CEO crates. I'm sorry, it was similar to CEO crates where you would source a, a vehicle cargo and you would take that car um, back to your warehouse and eventually you could sell it. And if you wanted to sell more than one vehicle, you needed the same amount of players. Like if you wanted to sell four vehicles, you had to get four players. If you wanted to sell a list of specific vehicles, you had to get those specific vehicles. Um, it was a fun update. But some people got pissed off when they got low-end cars. However, though, if you got a certain amount of low-end and medium-end cars, you would eventually just get high-end cars. Um, it was a fun update, but the biggest complaint about the update was how damaged the cars would get. Like, the cars would get damaged really easily, and you'd lose a lot of money. Plus, on a lot of the missions, NPCs and, like, helicopters would chase you and just shoot up the car, and you'd lose thousands of dollars by the time you got it back to the warehouse. But other than that, it was also a great update. Um, now, 2017... 2017 was also a very strong year for GT Online. We had gotten the Cunning Stunts um, uh, uh, special vehicle circuit. That just basically, just to sum it up, it was just an addition to um, uh, it was just an addition to uh, the Cunning Stunts update. Added 20 new races, a, a few new things, but just to go over that really quickly, it was an addition to, to Cunning Stunts. But now, you know, we have the other content. We had Gun Running. Now, Gun Running, uh, Rockstar announced this like I think it was just like March of of 2017, and so it was actually one of the most clickbait things on YouTube. Clickbaiters constantly kept talking about the gun running update. But with the gun running update, we had gotten a new bunker. We had gotten a new property, the bunker. We had gotten the ability to produce weapons. And basically the bunker was, when you think about it, really like a large MC business, but was kind of separate. You could also do it as a CEO. And so you could either steal supplies or buy supplies, though I recommend buying supplies. And we had gotten, you know, a bunch of new vehicles with this. We had gotten the night shark we had gotten the um uh we had gotten the apc we had gotten the oppressor now 
the oppressor the oppressor this was one of the most controversial vehicles when this first came out because the because everything that we've had in gt online at that point it was getting ridiculous but we really didn't have anything futuristic and the oppressor is basically the, the start of it so if you're wondering what where all the futuristic stuff started in gt online it started with gun running so gun running was mostly a great update but the oppressor became a controversial vehicle and so the oppressor right away became the number one griefing vehicle it replaced the laser because what actually happened was we had gotten MOC, which the MOC was a mobile operations center. We had gotten a few new missions with the MOC, but the MOCs were mostly used for some car um, car customization, but also to purchase new new um, uh, new attachments for the weapons. So we actually had a Mark II ability for the weapons and one of them was explosive rounds now for the heavy sniper and to unlock these attachments you had to do something called research which research was actually a massive disaster it was actually the worst part of this update research you had to research basically stuff in your bunker and you had to wait for some time or pay two hundred twenty thousand dollars i think the research items was like over 40 something items and it was randomized whatever you get but once you finish the research, you never really had to deal with it at that point. But research was just a giant mess when it came in. But anyways, about the explosive sniper. The explosive sniper pretty much ended jet griefing. Because jet grief griefing still exists to this day. But uh, uh, griefers are way more careful now. And I think the ex a lot of people complain about the explosive sniper. But I think it was necessary. Because before the explosive sniper came out, you had people that constantly griefed in jets. It was ridiculous. And with the heist update, they were able to own a Hydra jet. And so they would constantly spawn that and grief people. And there was very few ways to defend yourself. You could eventually try shooting it down until it was smoking but griefers would be able to escape when it started smoking with the explosive snipers two shots and their jets are done and so that's why i think the explosive sniper is probably one of the best um additions to the game but as for the um as for the oppressor the oppressor it did help getting around the map i'm not denying that but it became automatically the number one griefing vehicle and you could also spawn it with the mc which made spawning it very quick very easy a lot of people got very frustrated with that and got kind of pissed off with that that but this was still nowhere near as bad as the mark oppressor mark ii then what actually happened was only um uh only two months later we had gotten the smugglers run update which i was very surprised that two months later we got something for sm uh, another dlc smugglers run is a pretty controversial dlc there's some people that say they love the dlc other people that say they hate it other people are in between now the thing that most people agree with that the update was great in smugglers run was an update that was centered around the aviation community so the aviation community had requested an update for some time and smugglers run was just that so they added the ability to buy a hangar and most people bought it in Fort Zancudo, or, or, but the other one was LSIA, but Fort Zancudo was the best one. And you now had hangar access. You could store hangar vehicles um, in there. There was tons of new planes, from the Molotov um, to the Rogue, um, the Hunter. Uh, there was just um, uh, so many planes and helicopters. The point is, it was a pretty big update in that. And th these vehicles could be customized pretty much the same way that, that cars could be, cars and motorcycles could be customized. We had the ability to drop bombs. Uh, these, these, um, uh, this, this was just a, gr uh, a great update in terms of content. Um, it added the, it added the hangar business which added the ability to source crates. Now, this is the part where it's controversial, where, which I was talking about. Most people agree Smuggler's Run was a great update. But what happened was with the hangar update. The hangar update was controversial because with the hangar update, you would constantly source crates. And you, you would think that this was cool. Like, you know, you'd think this was kind of similar to CEO crates, which it was a little bit. The problem was with the CEO update, you could source three crates if you wanted to. With the hangar update, you could not source four crates, which four crates was the max. You could only source one. So it depended on the people you had in your MC or CEO. If you had three people, you could only source three crates max. If you had four people, you could source four crates, two people, two crates. So if you had one person yourself, you could only source one crate. You could not source more than that. And that was the problem with it, is it, it took way too long. And most people don't want to help other people source crates. They don't. You know, they don't really get much out of it. So that was the problem with the uh, Smuggler's Run update. But the Smuggler's Run update became more controversial later on because actually a few months later, what actually happened was Rockstar nerfed the Smuggler's Run update. So Smuggler's Run actually used to pay out way more than it pays out right now. And so it was nerfed. And Rockstar's logic for that was that it was glitched. The payouts were glitched. But the payouts were glitched. Why did you leave it like that for months? And so that's why I say that Smuggler's Run was a pretty controversial update um, to this day. I think it was overall a good update. It was a great update, but I think it was controversial in that um, in that regard, which is the how long the business took and just the pay, the payouts getting nerfed. Smuggler's Run, the hangar business, is probably the least used business in GTA Online. Like I very rarely see people doing the hangar business. I see way more people doing vehicle cargo than I and crates than I see people doing the hangar business. And then in December of 2017, we had gotten the Doomsday Heist update. Now, Doomsday Heist, ooh, man, where do I start with the Doomsday Heist update? Okay, with the Doomsday Heist update, 
Doomsday Heist was a, um, a a massive update. It was there was no question about that. It was a very very big update. It added facilities, which was a facility, a new underground property that you could buy. Um, Doomsday Heist. It added a tons of new vehicles. So it added things like the Kanjali tank. It added the um, uh, it added the Avenger helicopter, which is basically like an aerial version of the MLC. It added the jetpack. It added the um, uh, Akula, which is a stealth helicopter. So it added, uh, you know, a, a bunch of, like, you know, cool things. It added the Stromberg, you know, an underwater vehicle. But the Doomsday Heist added the Heist, which is probably the biggest part of the Doomsday Heist. Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And this was basically, like, some, some crazy plot that was going on, and you were trying to unravel it. And then halfway through the story, you get betrayed by Avon, who turns out to be the, actually the main antagonist. But the reason that I didn't like Doomsday... The reason I didn't like it is because Doomsday took one step in the right direction, which it kind of added, like, these prep missions, which um, some of the stuff, like, previously in the past, you would have to do these long setup missions to steal a vehicle, but now you really didn't need to do that. You could technically now do that in free mode. But some of the setup missions in the Doomsday Heist were some of the hardest in the game. Like, the Avenger setup mission, like, going in there, like, the lights just get cut out, I had to fight all these enemies with just um, poor visibility, and they're so accurate. I think the main complaint with the Doomsday Heist is that the missions were just very hard. You actually encountered, like, juggernauts. And while I don't mind the challenge at the, at the same time, the problem is that a lot of the enemies that you fought in the Doomsday Heist, you would just shoot them a bunch of times, they would fall behind cover, they'd get up, you'd shoot them, they'd fall behind cover. It got ridiculous, and it got really futuristic with, like, Avon, like, had this huge clone army that he was using against you. And so, because of that, some people look back on the Doomsday Heist and they say, I really didn't enjoy the Doomsday Heist, like, they didn't enjoy the heist. I think, you know, it was... It was a great update, don't get me wrong, but I don't think the heist itself was just that good. It was a new way to make money, don't get me wrong, and you can now do these heists with two people. You didn't need to do them with four people anymore, which was, that was definitely a plus. That was definitely a step in the right direction. But the heist itself, I did, really did not like the, the heist. But then there's also the worst part of the update, and the worst part of the update was the Orbital Cannon. The Orbital Cannon forever changed GT Online. The Orbital Cannon was an addition to the facility, which basically you could hit anybody anywhere that you wanted to on the map. There's very few places people could hide. The only place people could hide is they could hide inside buildings or they could hide under certain structures. But other than that, you were pretty much vulnerable everywhere. It doesn't matter how fast you were going, you could not escape the Orbital Cannon. And so the Orbital Cannon could happen at any time when you're doing a cell mission. And then you had the Orbital Cannon glitch, where people quickly figured out that if you close your application, that you don't have to pay for the Orbital Cannon. And so people spammed the Orbital Cannon glitch for years. For years, people used the Orbital Cannon glitch. And there's so many griefers in this game, so many toxic players. You get into a fight with them, they'd attack you. You would kill them back in self-defense. They'd get pissed off. They would use a heist invite teleport right back to their facility. Orbital Cannon you and leave. And so many people, so many people lost hundreds of millions of dollars of cargo on GT Online over the years. Just because of the, of this stupid Orbital Cannon. So the Orbital Cannon is something that I feel should have never been added to GT Online. I personally think it was a disaster. But then in 2018, 2018, we had a few controversial updates. 2018 was kind of like an okay year. In 2018, we had the Southern San Andreas Super Sports Series. Southern San Andreas Super Sports, I personally think that this was the, the, um, the worst um, update that came out in some time. Now, or I think it was the most disappointing update. And I think it was kind of disappointing because people were expecting some, uh, something new to be added to the game, possibly a new property, and then basically what Rockstar had done was they just added just new um, uh, new cunning stunt races. They called them hot ring circuits, but you could pretty much argue this was just an addition to cunning um, uh, cunning stunts. To be fair, this did come out just three months after the um, Doomsday Heist, but it was an update that a lot of people were not that excited for. And then we had the After Hours DLC. Now, the After Hours DLC, I think, was the best update of 2018, and I think it was an underrated update. Now, some people that say that After Hours sucked, I think that, they, I think that they're wrong. I think it was a great DLC. Now, the reason After Hours, I think, was a great DLC is because it added nightclubs. The After Hours DLC also brought in um, Tony Prince um, uh, from the Ballad of Gay Tony in GTA 4. So it added back a fan favorite, added the ability to buy nightclubs, and with these nightclubs... Uh, you had like four DJs. You had Dixon, uh, Tales of Us. Uh, you had um, uh, you you had Solomon and the Black Black Madonna. And these DJs would each have a mission in regards to them. You'd have to do a favor for them, and they'd come back to your club. Uh, the nightclub ran on popularity 
which popularity would do by starting up missions, but the popularity at the start was really bad. Today, nightclubs are great, but the popularity at the start was really bad, and I think you would get like a max of $10,000 every 48 hours, max popularity. It just was not worth it. However, though, the best part of the update was the underground part. The underground part of the, of the After Hours update. The reason that this part was actually really good was because... Um, because you had a giant passive business that linked all your other businesses and didn't really affect it. So you could link your, your MC businesses to this. You could link your bunker to this. You could link your crates to this. And what happened was the nightclub would basically produce a mix of everything. And you could choose what to source. But the best things to source were sporting goods, South American um, uh, imports, pharmaceutical research, um, uh, cash creation, and cargo and shipments. Those were the five best things to source. And the thing, the great thing about this is you could use custom delivery vehicles. So you had the mule, the the um, uh, the speedo custom, and the um, uh, and the final one, the uh, the the um, damn, I'm, I'm I'm losing I'm losing my track of thought right now. Was it the the phantom? I no no that was the, the phantom wedge was something completely different. Um, uh, but I I'll, I'll have the name of it on the screen right here. I'm just losing my track of thought. But the point that I'm making, this update added the ability to be able to sell with cust three custom vehicles. Upgraded them, armored them, actually even had some weapons on them sometimes with SAM turrets or, you know, a machine gun or a minigun, depending on if you were driving the Speedo. So it was always one delivery vehicle. It didn't matter if you were selling, you know, a massive shipment. It was always one vehicle. Sometimes you might have to drive some of the larger vehicles if you were selling the larger shipments, but it was always one vehicle. So this was basically the ultimate solo business. So when people were saying that after hours suck, I don't know what people were talking about because this was one of the, this was probably the best solo DLC was after hours. I would say yes. I would say it was the best solo DLC because it had a solo business, which you really did not need to do anything. You don't need to pay any fees um, uh, to purchase supplies and it would just produce on its own. And then you could just sell it. So if you play GT Online every day for a few hours, you could always make a sale with this DLC. So that's what I think it was great. Later on, they added the Terabyte, which was, you know, a new vehicle that you could spawn to, um, uh, to customize vehicles, a little bit smaller than the MLC, but it added the most controversial thing in this update, and that was the Oppressor Mark II. Oh, man. Where do I start with the Oppressor Mark II? The Oppressor Mark II was a disaster um, because what happened was when it first was coming out, people were saying, oh, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's fine. It's not going to cause that much problems. I remember people saying that, but people found it in the files before it came out. But the problem with the Oppressor Mark II, I knew that it was going to be a problem. And the reason I knew it was a problem before it even came out was because the thing had countermeasures. The original Oppressor did not have countermeasures. And the original Oppressor was way harder to control in the air. This thing just hovers. And so it re almost requires no skill to use, and the missiles were very accurate. Today, the missiles were actually patched years later. But at the time, this thing terrorized GT Online for four years. It completely changed GT Online, and I think it changed GT Online for the worse. So after hours, I would give the DLC a great um, a great review, but the problem was the Oppressor Mark II. That was the only thing that I really had a problem with. That and probably some of the the, the popularity payouts, but the, the Oppressor Mark II was just a really bad addition. I personally think it had no place in GTA Online. I know some people might say, oh, I use it for grinding and stuff like that. I get that, but I personally think it really had no place in GTA Online. I just don't think it did. And then we had the Arena Wars DLC. Now, with the Arena Wars DLC, this was a very controversial update and the most controversial update of 2018. Arena Wars, actually, I was very surprised that this came out when it did because Red Dead Online had just launched, and so we were not expecting a GT Online update in December, but we got it. Now, Arena Wars, um, it seemed like a cool update at first, but it pretty much turned into a disaster. The reason that Arena Wars was the most controversial, one of the most controversial updates was because it was the most expensive update. Well, at least one of the most expensive. I personally think Arena Wars was the biggest paywall update in GT Online. By paywall, I mean that you have to purchase something in order to really have fun with the DLC. The reason Arena Wars was such a paywall, you had to purchase a new property at the arena, which seems fine, you know, a new property. But the problem is the entire update was centered around adversary modes. So you needed other players to fight against. And I think the biggest failure of the Arena Wars was there was no co-op modes. There was no modes that you could fight against AI. Why, why wasn't there like a co-op mode, like a survival mode or something like that with Arena War vehicles where you fight NPC vehicles? Why couldn't they do something like that? I think that would have been cool. But the fact that the entire DLC, the entire DLC is formulated on fighting other players, you, you, you are dependent on other, other players, and the fact that the vehicles, the vehicles were so overpriced, and you could unlock trade prices for them, but they were randomized. 
depending on how you leveled up in the arena. And the vehicles were so expensive. And the clothing was even so expensive, like $200,000 for the clothing. It was just ridiculous. It was just stupid um, uh, what they did with this DLC. So it had potential. And some of the Arena war Wars um, adversary modes, when you play them against other players, they were fun. Don't get me wrong, they were. But the payouts were just so bad. The DLC was too expensive. And the fact that, the fact that you depended on other players... And you can't even find really any more, at, at barely any matches with it. It just, it, it quickly turned into a disaster. It was also players, players would also use custom vehicles. So the players that were actually very rich in GTA Online would actually use their custom Arena Wars vehicles. And these vehicles had an armor and a weapons advantage over the vehicles that, that weren't upgraded. And so players were actually getting screwed over because of that, because the players that had more money had generally the better vehicles. So it was just a paywall update and a disaster. Now, moving on to 2019. 2019, we had two DLCs only in that year. But even though we had two DLCs, 2019 was one of the best years ever for GTA Online. So in 2019, we had the Diamond Casino Resort. And this came out in July 23rd, 2019. Now, Diamond Casino, this is a DLC a lot of players didn't think Rockstar would ever do because of the, because of the, the uh, controversy surrounding gambling. However, though, what I will say about this DLC is that even though there was controversies surrounding the the um, the gambling, um, uh, it was generally a fun DLC, and I did enjoy it. Now, some people think this DLC was, you know, a disaster. I disagree. I think it was great, though. If you live in another country outside the U.S., I can understand why you thought that it was a disaster, because this update added the casino. You know, a new building in GTA Online that you could visit. A lot of players can meet up there. And had the ability to buy casino penthouses, which were also really cool. But most importantly, the biggest part of this update was that it added casino games. Roulettes, um, slots, blackjack, three-card poker, horse betting. Uh, and a lot of players internationally were locked out of this. Because there are, in, in my country in America, you could go in the casino and you could play all the games because it was actually Rockstar had actually locked it out of their countries. And the reason they locked it out of their countries was because Rockstar was potentially um, scared about lawsuits because there was gambling laws in a lot of other countries. And so because of that, Rockstar did not want to get sued. They didn't want to, I guess they were scared about breaking potential laws. And they were, because of that, they locked this, the, the games out for a lot of people. Though I think that the, peop the people that weren't able to like play some of the games, I think at least they should have been able to play Spin the Wheel, which Spin the Wheel is not gambling. It's not because you're guaranteed a prize every day. Gambling is, is pretty much when you risk something. If you're not risking anything and you're guaranteed a prize, I don't think that's really gambling, at least in my opinion. But it also added the casino storyline, which it basically explained how the Duggins ended up taking over the casino. So the Shanks, the Triads, originally owned the casino. and explains how the, the Duggins, a corrupt family from Texas, were coming in and trying to take the casino. But I think casino was a great update. And it also added the casino jobs, like uh, casino work that you could start in free mode. This is different than the story. So I think the casino um, was a great update because it added a place that you could hang out with your friends, play some games. Though I feel bad for some of the players that weren't able to play those games and enjoy them. Then in December 12, 2019, half a year later, we had the Diamond Casino Heist, which Diamond Casino Heist was one of the greatest GT Online DLCs ever made. 100% one of the greatest GT Online DLCs ever made. Now, why was Diamond Casino Heist such a great update? The reason Diamond Casino Heist was such a great update was because it expanded on the Casino Heist, it added the arcade, a new property, which it used as a front to basically plan out the heist. So the Chengs, the uh, the Triad family that originally owned the casino, want revenge. And they want you to hit the heist. They bring back Lester. Um, uh, they bring in Georgina, a new character, um, the daughter of Senior, uh, senior Cheng. They brought back a lot of the original heist members that you could actually recruit, like Paige, Packy. But the thing is, these heist members didn't really have any dialogue. They were just people that just stood there in the background. I wish there was a little bit more um, cutscenes regarding them. But this heist allowed you to, to plan it out. And so this took everything that the original 2015 heist did wrong and greatly expanded on it and made it way better. So Rockstar really learned from their mistakes with the Doomsday heist. They learned from their mistakes with the uh, with the March 2015 heist. This added three options. Three options to go. Silent and sneaky, a stealthy approach. Aggressive, loud, or big con, disguises. And so even with those three approaches, there are so many different ways that you could go about this, different routes that you could take, um, uh, different preps that you could complete. There was a lot of preps. There was mandatory preps, but there was optional preps, like getting key cards to open up doors, um, getting uh, drills, extra power drills to be able to open up lock boxes in the, in the casino, choosing the getaway cars, though you could never choose where the getaway cars spawned. I wish you could do that. But it was a great update, and the payouts were actually really good. 
and you could do them with two people also. So it was a fun update. It added so much content to the game, and it, so many people were getting on the game because of this. And this, the heist had so much replayability because of this. The three approaches and all the different preps that you could do, all the different ways that you could go about this heist, the replayability was worth it. So he Casino Heist was an amazing update. Definitely one of the best updates ever added to GT Online. Now in 2020, 2020 we had two updates. We had the Los Santos Summer Special update, which Los Santos Summer Special, the reason we probably got a smaller update at that time was probably because the COVID pandemic was actually um, raging at this time. And so we had gotten a smaller update in the summertime. We had basically gotten a few new yacht missions. That's pretty much it. Um, we had gotten new vehicles, a bunch of new vehicles and new Benny's vehicles to be fair, but the content in the update itself was not that much. We'd gotten a yacht storyline mission, which people quickly forgot and did really did not replay it, but that's pretty much it for that DLC. But in December 15th, 2020, we had gotten Cayo Perico Heist, which Cayo Perico Heist, guys, I'm going to say this right now, the Cayo Perico Heist is the greatest update ever added to GT Online, ever. I really think that. I still think that to this day. I don't think any update will ever beat Cayo Perico. And the reason I think Cayo Perico was the greatest update ever, GT Online, added a whole new loca location, a new island. It wasn't that big, to be fair, but it added a new location that you could go to. And it added a believable story. So I was getting concerned with GT Online. I was getting concerned that the game was going way too futuristic, and it was getting ridiculous. But Cayo Perico went back to its roots. Rockstar did the right thing with this DLC. They they created a new antagonist and out of, out of all the antagonists that you fought in the in gt online uh avon hertz um the duggins um uh and now el rubio i think that el rubio was the best antagonist that you fought against he was this scary scary drug lord that was actually based on carlos lecter a german colombian drug lord that actually had his own private island but he had the island of Cayo Perico, which was off the coast of Colombia, this big drug lord. And so the um, uh, son of Martin Madrazo contacts you, tells you that he wants you to get some files from, uh, from Rubio. So Rubio is basically Martin's uh, main adversary, Martin's main rival. You go to the uh, island for a party. You scout out the island. Now, some people get pissed off about the scouting. To a degree, I can understand this because some parts of the island, you actually can't climb up. So once you fall in the water, you actually cannot climb up, which that, that I think is nonsense. I think you should be able to. But you basically scout the island. You find different things. You can find different things like disguises, you know, a, a rappel hook. Uh, you can find uh, uh, bolt cutters. A lot of different things that you can find uh, You can find around the island to actually help you with the heist. Then you have to find out what the what the target is in, in the in the heist that you're stealing, but also secondary targets such as cash, weed, and coke, and paintings. Paintings is the most valuable secondary target, but it only spawns at the mansion. And then you have coke, which can spawn all over the island. Um, that's the that's the uh, that's the third uh, the third best um, behind the main target. The second one is paintings, and then the third one is cocaine, and then after that it's weed, and then after that it's cash. But it added this added the this this was great because it encouraged you to explore the island and you could do this by yourself that was the best part of the the update there were so many different approaches that you could come in you could disguise yourself as a smuggler you could you could do a parachute operation uh, jumping in from like uh, from a plane you could go in by an attack boat you could go in through the under through a submarine and go in through the underwater grate which most people did that but the thing about this is a lot of people kept complaining and they kept saying Cayo Perico is getting boring it's getting repetitive oh it's it's boring i just go in through the grate but the reason it got boring i didn't get i didn't you know how i didn't get bored of Cayo Perico how i didn't get bored is i constantly kept mixing it up even when it was harder for myself i constantly kept mixing it up and that was the thing is people would go in through the sewer grate and that's all they would do. They would just get two people going for the sewer grate, get the gold, which gold I forgot to mention. I'm sorry. But gold is technically the, the thing that you have to get two people to get that with key cards. And it's actually the second most valuable, second most valuable. Then you got the paintings, then you got the coke, then you got the weed, and then you got the cash that's behind the main target, which the main target is obviously the most valuable. But people would go in through the sewers and they would constantly complain and say, oh, this is boring. But the reason it's boring is because you're making it boring. If you're constantly going through the sewers and nothing else, then you make it boring for yourself. And don't tell me that you can't get elite challenge if you do the other approaches. I started at the airfield by myself and I've got an elite challenge. So it's definitely possible to do elite challenge, like taking a disguise and driving it right through the front door, rappelling over the wall. You know, these options, st stealing a key card, going in through the side door. These are extra ways to go into the compound, and I think these are extra ways that diversify the gameplay. And you could even do aggressive and just blow right, the door right open. So there's different ways to go about doing this heist, and that's actually what I think made this heist um, so good. It was a new location. It was a solo thing. You could, do, you, you could do everything by yourself. You did not require any help. 
That's what made the update so great. A new location and the ability to do the heist solo and the fact that you could just do it so many times in a day. Rockstar later on, you know, they, they nerfed this, you know, recently, you know, they made it harder. They made it, they made a refresh rate on it for a, every few hours, but it's still one of the best ways to make money. So I personally think Cayo Perico is just the best update that's ever been added to the game. Now, in 2021, we had gotten two updates. We had gotten the Los Santos Tuners came out in July 20th, 2021. And Los Santos Tuners, it added, um, uh, it added Moody Man and Sasanta, two new characters that basically give you auto shop contracts, which are, I basically, you could argue, are kind of like mini heists. You do a few missions for them, and then you do the finale at the end. There are no other ways to plan this out. It's basically like, like the original heist layout. Just do the missions, and you do the finale, and that's, that's it. But it added the auto shop garage, a new property, and it added the ability to actually sell cust customer vehicles. So occasionally you get a customer vehicle that would spawn in. You customize it. You deliver it to the um, uh, you deliver it to the contact. And it added also like a, a tuners meetup place, like a place where players can meet up, show off show off their cars. This was an update that was uh, centered towards the car community once again. It wasn't a massive update, but I personally think that tuners was also a, a cool update. I really didn't have that much problems with it. And then we had the Contract DLC, which came out December 15, 2021. Contract is, again, one of the best DLCs made on GT Online. It's, um, it added Franklin Clinton back, added Franklin back, added Lamar back. It also added Dr. Dre, with Dr. Dre, a famous real-life rapper. Um, Vernon was also included in the storyline, and Imani, a new character, was, all, was added into the, into the storyline. So I added a new property. The contract agents, and you find out that years later, because GT Online takes place past the story mode at this point, Franklin owns his own business where he helps like celebrities, you know, deal with their issues and you know introduce them to the town. Um, and he's helping Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre's um, phone had gotten stolen. This was the prelude in Cayo Perico a year earlier. Dr. Dre's phone had gotten stolen. You're trying to figure out who was behind it. You go through the, a pretty decent storyline. It was mostly fun for the most part, and you get a decent payout at the end. However, though, the storyline is always the same The same uh, approach. It's not like a heist. It's always the same thing that you do. Though, the Dr. Dre storyline was a bit fun, but I remember I got copyright claims for the Dr. Dre music a month after I posted it. So for a month, I posted the Dr. Dre DLC. I had no copyright claims, and then a month later, my videos just got hit with a bunch of copyright claims, which is a bit ridiculous, but it was nice seeing Franklin, nice seeing Lamar, nice seeing Dr. Dre, nice seeing how Vernon, um, uh, nice seeing Vernon come back, and also Imani, a new character that actually helps you put on tech on your vehicles. Now Imani, she um, uh, she has like the ability to put certain vehicles had like a, a non lock on feature added, and the non lock on feature. This, fe uh, this feature helped out a lot because it made it much harder for Oppressor Mark II Griefers to kill you because if the Oppressor Mark II Griefers can't lock onto you, they generally suck. Um, they For people people that manually aim with the Oppressor Mark II takes way more skill. So I think that having the Imani Tech vehicles I think is useful because the Imani Tech vehicles aren't really weaponized and at the same time is they're very hard to lock onto. So it's a way for you to drive around the city without having to worry about getting blown up. Though we also have the contract... Um, the contract missions um, in free mode. So we have these um, these new contracts that we can start up and we can call Franklin or go on the computer. Though if you call Franklin, you get a random mission. And so these were great. These were, you know, a, a new way for you to make money through free mode, through Franklin's missions. Your safe also did build up a little bit of money. And, and if you complete 200 contracts, I think your safe then makes $20,000 a day, which is an extra addition of money. But the contract DLC, I think, was, was a great DLC, one of the best ones. It was nice seeing Franklin come back. And then lastly, in 2022, we had GT Online Criminal Enterprises. This was a bit of a controversial update, came out in July 26th, 2022. Now, the Criminal Enterprises, some people think that this DLC sucked, but I would disagree. I think the Criminal Enterprises was an amazing DLC. I think it was a great DLC. And Criminal Enterprises was very important to me and holds a special place in my heart. And the reason that it holds a special place in my heart is because it got me back into GTA Online. Because I was getting very bored of GTA Online, and so I I was getting to the point where I almost pr completely stopped it. I wasn't really doing streams anymore. I wasn't really doing that much content for it anymore. I covered when new updates came out, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't really doing that much content for it anymore. And so what happened is uh, this update, the reason it brought me back, was because it added something that should have been in the game since the first businesses came out, but Rockstar finally did it, and that was the ability to sell in private lobbies. You could sell in private lobbies, finally, finally, being able to sell in private lobbies and source crates. 
this encouraged me to start streaming again. And the thing is, though, I've been streaming GTA Online for over two months now, and I have not gotten griefed once in those two months because I can just play with my friends and my viewers, and I don't have to worry about somebody constantly trying to join the lobby and orbital cannon me. It just made the game so much more enjoyable for me, so I really did like this update. I also liked how the update added new features to every single, you know, role and business in the game. It added, uh... Lupe is a new contact for CEO crates. Lupe had a, some real, uh, a few really bad missions, like one of them was the Hookies mission, where you actually go underwater to source crates. It was a mission that took can take over well over 15 minutes. It was a bad mission, but other than that, you had these technicians in each of your CEO warehouses, and these technicians, you pay like $7,500, and they source between one to three crates. And if you have five warehouses, you can have five of these technicians doing this at the same time. Though the only unfortunate thing is you gotta go to each warehouse. There's not an option to just buy it once from all of them. But they can source between one to three crates and also can get special crates for you from time to time. So it's just great. Makes the crate business so much more effective. For the nightclubs, the nightclub added new popularity missions. It also boosted popularity earnings. I think it's to $50,000 now. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the, uh, the nightclub also... Um, the, has these special events that go around in the club itself where you have to throw an unruly person out of the club or drive a drunk person home. It adds more life to the club and these missions are pretty easy and give you a lot of popularity and pay you out 10 grand. So it did definitely help, made the popularity just so much better. And then for the bikers, they added a new business to the bikers. They added a um, bar to it, which you see some NPCs in it. And the bar doesn't produce you that much money. It's like $5,000 every 48 minutes as long as you complete the supply missions. But still, it's a nice addition. They added two new MC contracts, and they added the ability to also source customer vehicles. The same we did for the auto shop, but now with bikers. And um, we also had an addition with the bunker. Now with the bunker, we had uh, a few new resupply missions, which that's not really that good. In my opinion, it's always better to buy supplies. But we also had an option to be able to source some, uh, some guns that will produce in this truck. And the drops sometimes were very far away. You'd get around $50,000 for it every time. But uh, you had a similar mission with the CEO. But the mission that you had with the CEO, it was a bit better because it would spawn more closer to the destination where you actually had to drop it off to. And that's what I liked about this DLC. It wasn't big, but it was much better than a DLC like Arena Wars, which shows you that it shows you that having a large update doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be good. And what, what I think made this update successful is the fact that it added something new to every, pretty much most of the businesses in the game, updated them. And so think about it this way, if Rockstar adds a new business to the game, all people basically do is they buy that new business, grind that new business straight for like a month or two and it gets very repetitive. With this, people are more likely to play all the new, all the current roles in the game, go back to them and start doing them again because they have new activities. So I do definitely think this was a step in the right direction and I think this was good on Rockstar's part. And don't worry, in December you'll probably get an even bigger update. Uh, December time, usually big updates come out around that time but that's pretty much it that is for gta online in 2020 uh from 2013 to 2022 i know it's like over an hour but i had a lot to say about all the updates that were in this game for some time so gta online was just a, you know a, a great open world game a great online game it has flaws sure but it's still you know one of the best online games that I ever played and i've had a lot of fun with it but now here's the question at the end which is why is gta online so successful why do players, so many players come back to this game? Why? Why do so many players come back to the game? Because you can purchase everything in the game with in-game currency. You can buy microtransaction shark cards, which um, uh, will give you money in-game and let you buy DLCs faster than having to actually play, um, play missions and run other businesses. So there's that thing that players can get on the game, they can play the game, have fun. If they grind enough, they can buy the businesses, do the activities. But if they don't feel like doing that, they can buy shark cards. And this was a very smart business model for Rockstar. Free content means more players getting on the game. But also um, advertising shark cards and microtransaction um, uh, revenue for people that want to speed it up. So I think that, you know, this formula that Rockstar has done has worked out very well for them over the years. And also, it's most importantly, is the fact that they do constantly large updates. And, you know, every six months, we have a pretty big update, which I would consider that constant updates. Like in the past, we'd get three, three updates a year. Now we get two, one in the summer, one in the winter. But I still consider that constant updates because we get a big update in the summer, which lasts for a few months. And then we usually get an even bigger update in the winter time that lasts for a few months. So we know that every six months, we're pretty much going to get DLC on GT Online. You know, everybody pretty much knows that. And that's what I think made GT Online such a successful game. It was the constant free update being added to the game, new businesses, new properties, new activities to do, new things to buy, 
And so players kept returning to the game. They knew that something was going to come on the game. I just wish that Red Dead Online would gotten, have gotten similar support. But that is pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed kind of my documentary talking about the history and evolution of GT Online. If you did drop a like, because I'm making a few lore videos, and I'm actually currently making a my ultimate money guide. So I'm making the best money guide that I've I've I have ever um, uh, thought of, and so I, I honestly think this will be the best money guide that I've ever created. It's gonna take me a little bit of time to make it, but when I do make it, it'll be great. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful day, everyone.